page 345, I want to talk about using identities to solve equations. Now, I don't think I put one like this on your test. At least I know it's not on the written. There might be one on the multiple choice. But I think I threw one on one of your quizzes, and this does show up on the provincial. So we're going to cover it here. Using identities to solve equations. And it says solve the following equations where 0 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 2 pi. And the first one, you'll notice, has cos squared and sine. Now, if this was a multiple choice question, I would glance at the answers, and if they were decimals, I would say, ha, ah, graphing calculator. But they've given me between 0 and 2 pi, and I think they're suggesting I can solve this algebraically, but I've never given you something with two trig functions in it. What the heck can I do here? I can target that cos squared. See it? How can I write cos squared as a sine? And your hint is, look at the top row of your formula sheet. What is cos squared if I want it as a sine function? Kyle. Okay, you said 1 minus sine. 1 minus sine squared. What I can actually do to solve this is rewrite the 2, but instead of a cos squared, put a 1 minus sine squared, and then minus 3 sine x equals 0. What do you think we would do now? Using your, because you've got some good equation solving skills, what would you do now? Troy. Get rid of brackets. Yeah, totally. 2 times 1 is 2. Minus 2 sine squared x minus 3 sine x equals 0. What kind of an equation is this? It's a quadratic. How do I know? It's got a squared. I don't like this because the quadratic term, the squared term, is negative. We've never really taught you to deal with squared terms that are negative. Do you know why? How can you make it positive, Troy? Yeah, just throw everything to the other side. I'm going to plus this over, plus this over, minus that over. It's going to be plus, plus, minus. <coughs> we're going to run out of room here if we're not careful, but that's okay. Now this is a lovely quadratic, just like the quiz that you wrote recently. Uh, it's going to factor because there's no GCF. I checked for that already. Oh, and you know what? I'm almost positive there's going to be a 2 sine x and a sine x. And again, if you don't know how to factor these, I'm around after school. I will happily teach you, but I need to find out what method you were taught first, and then I can reinforce that method. Just there's so many teachers teaching different methods, I generally don't give one in class in grade 12. And for a negative 2 there, uh, I think I want to go plus 2 minus 1. Does that give me my uh, 3? Yeah, it does. Wish I knew how my brain did that. No idea. What are the roots of this second bracket? What are the roots of this second bracket? Sine x equals negative 2. Why can I do that? Oh, yeah, lowest sign gets is negative 1. Oh, thank you. They gave me one factor with no roots. Save me some time. What are the roots of this first bracket? Sine x equals 1 half. Have I got a triangle with a 1 and a 2 in it? Yeah. Cast rule. I'm running out of room here, but we'll see if I can fit this all in. C-A-S-T. Sine is positive here and here. Which triangle is this? Oh, this is the 1, 2, root 3 triangle. Thank you. Glad you made it. They talked to me ahead of time, so no dice for them. Um, 
Hey, which angle has a sine of one half, the bottom one or the top one? Pi by six, in fact, I'm pretty sure I'll get x1 equals pi by six and x2 equals five pi by six. That's a five if you can't read my writing. So there's an example of where you can use a trig identity. How would you know that you were supposed to use a trig identity? Well, if it was multiple choice, you would glance at, the, first of all, you'd see there was more than one trig function. Ugh. And you would glance at your answers if it was multiple choice, and they wouldn't be decimals. Although, I'll be honest, if it was on the calculator section, I'd probably still just choose to graph left side, graph right side, find where they cross, and change my answers to decimals. I think it'd still be faster. But, doable. Oh, and if it was on the written section, I guess you'd have more than one trig function and it was on the written section. I've told you, though, on your test, not going to happen. On the provincial, I don't think I've seen one on the written. I have seen it every couple of years on the multiple choice. Let's try B. Sine x minus root 3 cos x. equals zero. Hmm. Suggestions. Fraction calculator? No, we're going to try and do this algebraically here. First of all, is this a quadratic? So I'm not, no, it's not. So I'm not going to be so attached to making this equal to zero. And in fact, I might, because there's only two terms, I might say, why don't I write this like sine x equals root 3 cos x. Why don't I try plussing that over? Looks nicer. Anybody see it? I'll pause. What? You need to go uh, tan equals root three. Where'd you get that? Oh. Divide by cos. Divide by cos. What happens to the coses over here? Can they cancel? It is factored. And Troy, what is sine over cosine? In fact, you get tan x equals root 3, and I'll make it obvious, I'll put the root 3 over 1, because it is the 1, 2, root 3 triangle. There was a tangent hidden in there. That's kind of a clever trick. That one does show up just once in a while, the odd time. But did you hear how I recognized it? I said, it's equal to 0, but it's not a quadratic. Is, is that why you're always, what kind of an equation is this? It's a yeah, it's not a quadratic. So I said, I don't need to be so attached to keeping it equal to 0. Uh, we can solve this. Do I have a triangle? Oh, first of all, cast rule. C A S T. Tangent is positive here and here. Do I have a triangle with a root 3 and a 1 in it? Yeah. Which angle, the bottom one or the top one, has a tangent of root 3 over 1? Opposite over adjacent. Pi by 3. Pi by 3. And I get x1 equals pi by 3. And x2 equals 4 pi by 3. Ta-da! So I'm going to add a couple of questions for you to practice. You try seven. Okay. Number seven. Now I've got a choice. If you want to, I can do a few more identity examples from that big hints for trig identity sheet. 
By the way, that hints for trig identity sheet, that's not homework. I just always fold a copy of their side because it's very hard for me to make these up in my head. That way I got a bunch of extra practice identities I can do with you if you want me to. Or I can uh, give you the rest of the class. Do you want me to do a couple more examples or do you want to just take... I see people nodding. Okay, give me one second then. I'm going to pause. Continue. So I just gave you your take-home quiz. And give me a second. I need to go find uh, hints for proving trig identities. Bring that puppy up. And let's try... Uh, what? 22? Okay, sure. Let's try 22. tan n all over tan n plus sine n equals 1 minus cos n all over sine squared n. All right. Suggestions. <coughs> okay, I think I would do that. By the way, starting with the most complex side, I think we're working on both. Although, is the right-hand side already in terms of sine and cos? I probably am going to come back to that later, I suspect. Let's see. So you're saying write the left side in terms of sine and cos because there is more than two trig functions. So tan is going to be uh, sine n over cos, cos, not s, Mr. Duick. Good gosh. That n is throwing me off. I'm so used to Greek letters. All over sine n over cos n. Did it again. Plus sine n. Mr. Duick is my math teacher. He says, don't you dare not write that as a fraction. If we have one fraction, we want all fractions. How many levels does this fraction have? Now, if it was just one fraction over one fraction, it would be, how do I divide by a fraction? Something multiply. Can you see it's not going to work here because i got one fraction over two fractions. This is a complex fraction. I'm going to show you that same trick. It's a great trick. If you master it, if you learn it, it'll almost always save you two or three lines. What's the trick? Look at each mini fraction. What's my common denominator? Cos. I'm going to go like this. Add a bracket, add a bracket. I'm going to multiply by cos over cos. You can put it here, here, or you can put it here, here. I don't care. I usually have more room on the right side, so I'm going to go cos n over cos n. But to help me keep it all organized, Stacy, over 1, over 1. By the way, what am I really multiplying by when I multiply by cos over cos? See, the, that, the whole key here is if you ever multiply by something, it has to be a 1 because you want to keep these two things equal. If you multiply by something other than a 1, now this will no longer be equal to that. You can't prove it. You'll end up doing 15 lines of nonsense. Here, you see it? Cos cancels. And you get sine all over here do you see it cos cancels and you get sine n -n -n. plus here by the way I encourage you draw the little loops I learned a long time ago by putting that little chunk 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 thing uh, gets rid of a lot of my dumb mistakes keeps me, keeps me systematic here, is anything going to cancel? Nope, sine cos. Victoria, can I cancel? Have I? Have I factored? Don't you dare. I, and again, why am I so big on avoiding? Because as soon as you do that, now the rest of your work is wrong. You can't make it look like the right side. You can't do it. That's the only one of the reasons these are tough is as soon as you make an algebra mistake, you're out of luck. Suggestions now. 
Where, factor where? Oh, the bottom? Really? By the way, what is the GCF in the bottom? What do I have on the bottom here? That's a little breadcrumb, I think, telling me I'm on the right track. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, maybe. So I would go like this. Uh, it's going to be sine n all over sine n bracket 1 plus cos n. Victoria, can I cancel? Have I factored? Then I can. Oh, but what would be left on top? Yeah, let's do that. I don't want to leave it totally blank. That would be silly and confusing. So here's what I have. 1 plus 1 over cos equals 1 minus cos over sine squared. Now what? Now you got two options. I heard Troy here say sine squared equals 1 minus cos squared, and that would work. And I'll show you how you could do it that way in just a second. Here is where I would say conjugate. Because on the left-hand side, do I have a binomial denominator? Yes. With no squares? Yes. This is the conjugate trick. This is where I think I would say, by the way, what is the conjugate of this, Troy? What's on the top over here? That's also how I knew to do the conjugate. Because when I go 1 times 1 minus cos, I'm going to get the top. Little breadcrumbs along the way. So I would go like this. 1 minus cos n over 1 minus cos n. And on the top, woohoo, I get 1 minus cos n, which means that bottom must work out to sine squared when all is said and done. Let's see. When I multiply this out, I'll get 1. And then, Kyle, can you see I'll get a minus cos and a plus cos? What's a minus cos plus cos? Nothing. And then I'll get a minus cos squared n. What is 1 minus cos squared? Oh, can I cancel? Have I factored? No. What is 1 minus cos squared? Okay. 1 minus cos m all over sine squared m q e d. Now, Troy had an interesting approach. So put your once you've written that, put your pencils down. And look at what I had written in the blue here. Sorry, actually, look at what I had, sure, written in the blue here where we had 1 all over 1 plus cos. Troy, here's another approach you could have done. What did you say sine squared was? You could have gone 1 minus cos n all over 1 minus cos squared n. Now, the reason I don't really like this approach is because kids are so tempted to cancel. Because if you're in a rush, 1 minus cos and 1 minus cos squared look like they cancel. Especially because if you cancel a 1 minus cos on a 1... By the way, can I cancel? Have I... Okay, you can't, but if you cancel that and that, what would you get on top if you canceled out a 1 minus cos? A 1. And what's on the top over here? A what? Like kids are really, really tempted to do that. However, this factors. How many terms are there in the bottom? 2. Minus sign? Is the first term a perfect square? Is the second term a perfect square? This is actually different to squares. This is actually... 1 minus cos n all over 1 minus cos, 1 plus cos. Can I cancel? Have I factored? Then I could argue that those two brackets are the same. There's a 1 left behind, and lo and behold, I do have 1 plus 1 over cos. Sorry, 1 plus 1 over 1 plus cos. Either of those approaches is totally valid. We're at the stage now where for a lot of these, Alex, we've got two or three ways to get there. In fact, I, I can think of at least one other way that we could have got there too, but I won't go into it. The key, Justine, is don't make algebra mistakes. Don't cancel when you can't. Victoria, can I cancel? Have I? Those have to go together. Don't ever, when you're doing fractions, 
Don't ever multiply by something that's not a 1. That's why I yelled at you so much two days ago. For those of you when you're finding a common denominator who just have the habit of multiplying the top only, if you start that habit, you won't catch when you're doing it illegally. Trust me. Always top and bottom. Always. It was so much fun. Let's do another one. One more. All right, hit me with your best shot. What do you want to try? Twenty-nine. Actually, twenty-nine is from the old curriculum. So I'll talk about twenty-nine. I won't do it. Look at the top on the left. How many terms on the top on the left? Two. Minus sign? No. However, that does factor. Plus sign? Say yes. Perfect cube, perfect cube? Say yes. We used to teach a factoring rule for, it was called sum of cubes in the old curriculum, and you would factor that, and guess what one of your factors would be? Uh, sine squared plus 2 sine cos plus cos squared, uh, the bottom there, would end up being one of the factors, and a bunch of stuff would cancel. Okay? Kind of nerdly cool. So I'd love to do 29, but it's a bit beyond our curriculum. So uh, which one, sorry? 24? Oh, sure. That looks doable. Probably this is over the top in terms of what you'll see on the provincial. If you want to know what you're going to see on your test or what you'll see on the provincial, the big review trig package that I gave you, which is an assignment in which you can do everything except for anything with a 2 theta in it, that's a great idea of the level of difficulty. So 24. Ooh, I haven't done this one before, I don't think. It's been a while since I've done a brand new trig identity. I am getting my nerdy adrenaline rush. Well, the good news is I'm pretty sure the right side's done. Right? Oh, and this is where some of you may be so tempted. Why can't I plus one over? Because that would be assuming they're equal in order to prove they're equal. And that's really what makes identities tough, is we can't use our equation solving rules, which are glorious normally. I mean, normally if I was solving this, I'm plus one over and all sorts of stuff. Anyways, I'm pretty sure we're leaving the right as is. Suggestions. Ian is correct in that we are going to write everything in terms of sine and cos, but I'm going to give you some advice. Do you think we're going to eventually also have to get rid of brackets? I'm going to suggest we do it now without fractions, because you guys, are you're mediocre and you're becoming tolerable, but I know you make more dumb mistakes when there are fractions than when there are not. So I'm actually going to get rid of brackets first, then I'll rewrite everything in terms of sine and cos and bring in the fractions because I'm a good test writer. Always trying to think, how can I minimize my sloppy mistakes? And I, I, we've clued in this year, one of our biggest enemies on tests has been, we'll call them dumb mistakes, right? When we go through the tests, all of you are like, holy smokes, can't believe my math aid is coming back to haunt me, but it is. So uh, I'm gonna go boom, boom, secant squared, whatever the heck that thing is. Looks sort of like a V. I should know what that is. I can't remember now, though. Plus secant squared cosecant. And then it's going to be minus tan secant and minus tan squared all over. <sighs> cosecant, you guys asked for this, didn't you? Plus cosecant sine. By the way, you just got a half mark. If I did give you one this nasty, the nice thing about trig identities is as long as you can do the basic substitution, it's basically impossible to get zero. All right. Anything cancel? I was kind of hoping I'd end up like with a, a plus secant squared and a minus secant squared, but I don't. I didn't. Um, sorry, what did I forget to what? 
Oh, and the minus one. Sheesh. Except I'm going to do that because it's going to be a fraction, I'm sure, somewhere along the way. Well, actually, I guess what this is saying is that this whole thing should work out to what? One, because you're supposed to get one minus one is zero. Okay. So I may not need to combine fractions. I may just be able to make this work out to one. Um, I notice I have a secant squared and a tan squared. Are those related? Can someone look along the top row? Are they in the same identity or not? They are? Okay. Uh, what's secant squared the same as? Sorry? Ooh. I'm going to do that for starters. I'm going to go one, change colors, Mr. Duick, so it stands out a little easier so they can read it better. One plus tan squared plus secant squared cosecant minus tan secant minus tan squared minus one all over cosecant plus cosecant sine. And something good happens. I got a plus tan squared and a minus tan squared. So now I have 1 plus secant squared cosecant minus tan secant. What was that? Were you being witty and funny? If it was nerdy, I'll like it. Okay. Ugh. Now what? I think now we'll try writing everything in terms of sine and code. Do you see why I said there's kind of an art to this? Even though I called that hint too, I think we got we saved ourselves some yuckiness by saving that off a little bit. Yeah. Well, it, I can factor it out of that and that, but I, there's a one there. I was looking at that, actually. I was going, this is where I start to do some algebra in my head. If I pull a secant out here, I'd have a secant cosecant minus tan. What, this and this? With the other bracket. Well, we're going to keep it around. Okay, I'll, here, here's Ty's suggestion. Don't write this down because I don't think it's going to get us somewhere. But this is what I'll be either doing in my head or a scrap piece of paper or whatever. I went, okay, because I thought that too. I went, well, if I factor out a secant, I'll have a secant. And I'm writing X's instead of that stupid Greek letter because I can't write that Greek letter. Uh, cosecant minus tan. Like that's what I would have on the top. Or I could just put what? 1 over secant x. If I factor out a secant x from 1. Oh, aren't you clever? So you're, uh, you're saying that this is secant over secant. Yeah, that's, I think that's more complicated than I want to get to right now. I, I think if we write everything in terms of sine and cos, because I see lots of fractions, I'm kind of hoping some stuff will cancel. Let's try that first. So I'm going to go like this. 1 plus secant squared is 1 over cos squared. Cosecant is 1 over sine. And since I just wrote a fraction, I'm going to make that first one a fraction just to see what's going on here. Minus tangent is sine over cosine. And secant is 1 over cosine. All over. And I'm just going to write some ditto marks right now. We're going to leave that for a while. 
I would never do that on the test, but in my homework, uh, sure. So this is going to look like, when I tidy this up, 1 over 1 plus 1 over sine x cos squared x minus sine x over cos squared x minus 1 all over blah, blah. Well... I could write that as one single solitary fraction. What would my common denominator be? Sine x cos squared. Now, let's pause and let's try and think this through. To turn this into a sine x cos squared, what would I multiply the bottom by here? What would I get on top then? Well, sine squared is kind of nice. I mean, that It's on the top of my sheet somewhere. This would be a 1. In fact, I'd have a 1 minus sine squared, which is a cos squared. Ooh, you know what? I think we're going to try that. I saw some nice stuff potentially happening. Let's try writing the top as one single solitary fraction. So we're going to write the top as a fraction all over sine x cos squared x. What would I multiply a 1 by to change it into a sine x cos squared? Okay, so I'm going to go times sine x cos squared x, sine x cos squared x, and I'll get sine x cos squared x. Don't cancel because we're still doing some math. And then there was a plus sign, so the plus sign would drop down. What would I multiply a sine x cos squared x by to get a sine x cos squared x? So it's going to stay as is. The one's just going to drop down. Minus sine would drop down. What would I multiply a cos squared by to get a sine x cos squared x? Sine x, sine x, and ooh, I get a sine squared x. Ooh, what's 1 minus sine squared? cos squared, and then I'd have a GCF on the top of cos squared, and I have a cos... Ooh, good stuff happening here. I better rewrite the bottom and the minus one. <sighs> and I better draw the line. Isn't this fun? I know what we need. Yeah, let's put on the Rocky theme in the background. That'll help us, I think. That'll set the tone. Little pump us up, get our brain going music, because this is, yeah, this is in the big leagues here. That's assuming my iTunes decides to open up anytime soon. I think I have that under my test music, don't I? No, I don't. Good gosh. Oh, yes, I do. No, I don't. Theme. Rocky. From. There we go. Here we go. All right. That's better. Let's keep going. So we got... Sine x cos squared x plus cos squared x. That's this guy right here. All over sine x cos squared x. All over that thing, that thing. Minus one. A little too loud. What do I have on the top here? GCF. All right.
doing math now. No? Okay, fine. Victoria, can I cancel? I can! Oh, all over that mess. So here's what I end up with on the top. Sine x plus 1 over sine x. And remember, we said our goal, our thought was this great big thing will work out to just plain old 1. So what I'm hoping is the bottom works out to sine x plus 1 over sine x, because then I'd have something over itself. Let's rewrite the bottom finally, which was cosecant plus cosecant sine. Okay, now it's annoying. By the way, um, <laughs> cosecant is what over what? One over sine? Did you get a sine on the bottom? And will that give me a sign on the bottom? See, I, and a sign, I think we're on the right track. In fact, I'm willing to bet in two lines this is going to turn into sine x plus 1 over sine x. And we're done. Oh, feeling of pride. Let's see, let's see, let's see. You guys asked for this one. I've never done this one before. So cosecant is 1 over sine x plus... Cosecant times sine x is going to be uh, 1 over sine x times sine x over 1. Oh, what is 1 over sine times sine over 1? Okay. So much fun. Can you see where we're going now? I, oh, don't forget the minus one. Somewhere there's a line dropping down over here. Oh, and equals zero. Woo Miguel, common denominator, I would write this as one fraction. What would my common denominator be? What would I multiply this by? And I'd get one plus sine over sine. On the top, I have one plus sine over sine. We are basically done, holy smokes. Let's see, we would go times sine x, sine x, and we get this. Sine x plus 1 all over sine x, all over 1 plus sine x, all over sine x, minus 1. What's anything divided by itself? So I would go like this for the marker. And then I would go 1 minus 1 is 0. Question really easily done. Well, no, that really isn't a proper abbreviation. I don't know. Did I answer that already? Did I answer that already? Oh, I'm telling you, my little math nerd heart just ugh, darn right. That was excellent. That was the same rush I used to get playing Frozen Tag when I was like six years old with my friends. It was like, oh, I unfroze somebody? Yay! Now I'm their hero. Hey, I just got a trig identity. Now I'm their hero. Okay. Ah, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Only 13. In answer to your question, Dylan, and I'll answer it again, I've seen 9 and 10 line ones, but not this ugly. It was They were more lots of uh, algebra routine substitution. No, oh, another substitution. Oh, they made a substitution inside of a substitution inside of a substitution, but they were easy to spot. But th this was tough. 
Anyhow, the rest of the class is yours. I was hoping to be finished by 25 after. I went a bit longer. But you can work on the quiz. You can practice the identities. Hopefully, you're starting to swim some laps.